This video is sponsored by viewers like you at patreon.com slash casual historian. Click the top link in the description to learn more. I love gold. That's why I went out, I bought this gold coin. It's an ounce. When I bought it, it was $670 for this one coin. It's not a liquid! And one of the things that I like, as you know, is Birch Gold Group. There's not a central bank in the world that wants a gold standard. But they may have to go to it, uh, not because they want to, but because they have to, just to restore confidence in some kind of future financial crisis. Reality is an illusion. The universe is a hologram. Buy gold. Buy! Let's talk about gold. Now, if you're a filthy conservatarian like me, you've probably at some point unironically said that we should restore the gold standard. Somewhere in the Nevada desert, there's an abandoned S10 pickup with a pair of Ron Paul bumper stickers. One of the most attractive arguments for it is that gold is one of the oldest known forms of money. And it's true that gold has been used as money off and on throughout human history. But when gold bugs are talking about restoring the gold standard, they're usually referring to a very specific example. They were referring to the classical gold standard of the late 19th and early 20th centuries. It didn't appear overnight. It took nearly 200 years for the world economy to operate under the classical gold standard. And by the time it did, it was thrown out the window. The first modern country to adopt the gold standard was the Kingdom of Great Britain in 1717. Under the leadership of Sir Isaac Newton, the Royal Mint established a new minting ratio that favored the use of gold over silver. Parliament would adopt a de jure gold standard in 1821 after the introduction of the gold sovereign. The United States would follow a similar trajectory when the US Congress changed the exchange ratio between gold and silver in 1834. This new exchange rate encouraged the use of gold over silver and made the US a de facto gold standard country. The gold standard would spread around the world as large quantities were discovered in California and New South Wales. This increased the supply of gold enough to allow other countries to start adopting the gold standard as well. Like Britain and the United States, they were initially on de facto silver standards. But as the gold from California and Australia made its way into Europe, these countries began to reduce the amount of silver minted into new coins. And this went on until they stopped minting silver coins altogether. Some of these countries formed monetary unions, which meant that coins minted in one country could be used as legal tender in the others. First there was the Latin Monetary Union, consisting of France, Belgium, Switzerland, and Italy all using the franc, beginning the reduction of silver minting in the 1850s and ceasing by the end of the 1870s. The unified German Empire adopted the gold standard in 1871. This pushed Denmark, Norway, and Sweden into adopting both the gold standard and a monetary union by 1875. The Netherlands would adopt the gold standard in 1877, leaving Spain as the only country in Western Europe to not adopt it. Going eastward, we saw the Austro-Hungarian Empire cease their minting of silver coins in 1879, but not adopt a formal gold standard until 1892. The Ottoman Empire adopted the gold standard in 1881, followed by Egypt in 1885. Both Russia and Japan adopted the gold standard in 1897, followed by Greece in 1910. Back in the Americas, Chile adopted the gold standard in 1895, followed by Costa Rica in 1896, and Argentina in 1899. The United States finally adopted a de jure gold standard in 1900, followed by its neighbor Mexico in 1905, Brazil in 1906, and Nicaragua by 1912. Looking at this list of countries, I'm sure you're wondering, why did these countries adopt the gold standard? Well, the reasons are numerous, and many cases are particular to each country, but there are a few common threads. One big reason was the British Empire. Having operated under a de facto gold standard since 1717, and the fact that it was so big and powerful, opening your economy to the British Empire had benefits. And it's a lot easier to trade with a gold standard country if your country is also on the gold standard. Another big reason is stability. When a country is on the gold standard, they are supposed to operate under a set of rules. Countries are to publicly declare their money to be worth a certain amount of gold, and then buy and sell gold for that amount. This allows for easy convertibility of paper money into gold coins or bullion, along with easy exchange with foreign countries. If one country says that an ounce of gold is worth $20 and another country says theirs is worth $15, the exchange rate is discovered with simple math. The second rule of the system has to do with international monetary balance. This bit can be a bit technical, so here's a short version. Monetary balance, as in how much gold each country has, is maintained by the use of interest rates. Banks with lots of gold in reserve lend out money at low interest rates, and banks with low reserves lend out money at higher interest rates. Through normal economic transactions, the money taken from banks with low interest rates will make their way to banks with high interest rates due to the larger return on investment. This keeps money flowing between countries, and only falls apart when a government or central bank tries to manipulate the market. 
The other benefit gold bugs always talk about, of course, is price stability. Prices don't fluctuate nearly as much under a gold standard. The classical gold standard also benefited from occurring during a period of rapid industrialization. Even when gold supplies went up, industrial production also went up meaning that the increase in the money supply was met with an increase in goods to buy, easier trade, stable prices, and the fact that you don't need some giant international institution to set it up or manage it makes the gold standard sound pretty good. So if that's the case, why was it abandoned? The short answer is World War I. When war began in 1914, the spending needs of all the countries involved drastically increased. They needed money to pay for arms, uniforms, and salaries of the soldiers to fight their geopolitical enemies. And that's a lot easier to do if you don't have to follow some gold to currency ratio. The central banks can just print as much money as the government needs and be damned the consequences. If you look up modern arguments around the possible reintroduction of the gold standard, you will get lots of economists and politicians claiming that we shouldn't go back to it because it would prevent governments from implementing spending policies to stimulate the economy through through work programs, building projects, and cheap loans. How effective those policies are, and whether they are good enough arguments to not return to the gold standard are a different question from why it was abandoned in the first place. The main reason for not having a gold standard is to allow governments and central banks to spend and print unlimited quantities of money. This can be used to stimulate the economy during a downturn or used to prop up and prolong a war. But in the end, it's all about the government solving our problems by throwing money at it. Now something I should tell you, however, is that the story of gold money doesn't end with World War I. It goes on for most of the 20th century, but those are videos for another time, when I finally getting around to talking about the currency wars. To make sure you don't miss those videos when they come out, go ahead and click that subscribe button and the bell icon. If you would like to support the channel and make sure there's history content on YouTube other than military history stuff, then you should check out my Patreon in the top link in the description below. If you want more videos on money and economics related stuff, I have a playlist about the US national debt that you can check out at the end screen. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.